1956, the Barstows, a middle-class family of five from Wethersfield, Connecticut, had a dream vacation, an expense-paid trip to the recently opened Disneyland Park in California, thanks to some winning entries in a contest sponsored by Scotch brand cellophane tape. In 2015, the three children had their chance to visit Disneyland again, 59 years after their first visit. Robbins, the father of the original family, had made a film about the first trip. Called Disneyland Dream, the film has become something of a cult classic among home movie buffs. It is now enshrined in the National Film Registry at the Library of Congress, a permanent collection of films with particular significance in American life. In 2015, Disneyland was working on an ad campaign to mark their 60th anniversary. They invited the three children to Disneyland to help them out. Doing it back then is the way we had to do it. The camera person always had to come to later. Right, right. The Barstow kids had a magical day together, reliving the time when the original movie was made. This is Disneyland as it was just one year after its official opening. We paused to have our pictures taken in front of the flowered face of Mickey Mouse outside the railroad station. To get into the park itself, you go through a short tunnel underneath the Disneyland and Santa Fe Railroad, and then the spell takes place. Children's faces looking up, holding wonder like a cup. Our first stop was at the Disneyland City Hall to check in with our credentials as Scotch Tape Contest winners and to pick up four days worth of free tickets for all the rides. When we emerged, all of us in our special Davy Crockett jackets, what did we find greeting us but the famous Disneyland Marching Brass Band, all in bright red uniforms. What a welcome! Then Mary noticed the Disneyland news on the corner stand, and sure enough, today's headline read, The Barstow Family Visits Disneyland. That was enough to make anyone jump with excitement. We decided then that the children needed to have official Disneyland hats to replace their Connecticut sailor hats, at least for now. Dan and Dave bought space helmets, and Mary got a wide brim plastic shade hat. Our first ride was on the horse-drawn trolley car down Main Street, USA, reconstructed as it might have been half a century earlier. At the end of Main Street, there's a circular park from which branch out the four different major theme lands. This is where we said goodbye to the straw-hatted horse that had pulled our trolley. Over on the right, we found, first of all, Tomorrowland, with a special clock telling what time it was all around the globe. We took a thrilling simulated ride in the rocket ship to the moon and back. And remember, this was 13 years before humans actually did set foot on the moon. They had tickets that were A through E, and an E-ticket ride was like, that was the pre right. El Primo remember. ride, yeah. e, the E-ticket ride. Yeah. If we ran out of tickets, we went back for more. Sally ride when she came back from space. She yeah. said that was an e-ticket ride. Well, let's go on the Star Tours, which would have been an e-ticket ride. There you go. The thing I like about this ride is that it works because of Einstein's theory of general relativity and the equivalence of gravity and acceleration. Of course, back in 1956, I was only eight and didn't know a whole lot about Einstein or relativity. And my favorite ride was Autopia, where you got to drive around in little cars. Now, they had a height restriction for driving these little cars. Uh, I barely made it. Dan was too short, uh, but I just ignored him and went and had a great time. In 2015, Autopia still had the same height restrictions, but fortunately, Dan had grown some in the previous 59 years. Dan, you're finally big enough. You'll take All right, let's go. Okay, let's go. Dan took Cedar for a ride. Wave! The next land we visited was Fantasyland, the entrance to which is through the many-turreted Sleeping Beauty Castle, 
across a bridge over a protective moat. So I don't know if you know this, but the castle was originally uh, supposed to face the other way. They actually built it backwards. You see in the middle of the night while its architects were putting it all together, they misread the blueprints and they ended up putting the front on the back, the back on the front. Walt came in the following morning and looked at it. He said, you know what, just leave it. I like it better this way. So when you're observing the castle, look at it from both sides. You'll see that the other side, the side that faces Fantasyland, has a lot more detail than is on this side of the castle. Cool. This fantastic kingdom has settings and rides from any number of different times and places and stories. Most of the attractions relate to a familiar Walt Disney movie or cartoon character. Danny's favorite was Dumbo, the flying elephant. I was four years old, so what do I remember now about my favorite ride then? But my favorite ride in viewing the movie and seeing me in the movie has to be Dumbo. I mean, I don't know why, but Dumbo is just a classic ride. And there I am sitting in Dumbo, we're going around, I'm with Mother, and there's a moment where she puts her arm around me, and it just is so wonderful, I can look at it over and over. Another way to go round and round is in one of the Mad Hatter's teacups from Alice in Wonderland. By turning the wheel, you make the cup whirl. And all you can see is a dizzying blur. When you finally do stop spinning around, you find yourself face to face with Monstro the Whale, right out of Disney's Pinocchio. A canal boat takes you for a gentle ride through storybook land, going right into Monstro's giant mouth. Despite these fearsome teeth, however, the whale doesn't really swallow you. And when the boat comes out on the other end, you pass by beautifully constructed miniature settings for favorite childhood stories. My favorite ride was Storybook Land. Oh, it was so magical. There we were, looking at actual miniature scenes from stories I had read and loved as a child. Pinocchio, Wind in the Willows, Snow White. And it reminded me of the cardboard furniture and houses and scenes I had made for my dolls. Who knew I had learned to learn carpentry as an adult? And finally, looking up in the distance, we see Cinderella's shining castle. This brings us to the Casey Jr. Circus Train, with specially constructed cars to carry different kinds of passengers. The engine pulls the cars up and down over a series of nicely landscaped hills and valleys until they arrive at their destination. And then from one car, they unload the wild animals, and from another, the monkeys. Well, after all this excitement, we felt the need to go to the bathroom. At first, we didn't know where to go, but then we saw the signs for Prince and Princess, and we remembered that everybody in Fantasyland is a prince or a princess. In 2015, we couldn't find the Prince and Princess signs until we realized that the Prince and Princess had grown up into King and Queen. Then it was time for lunch. Knowing that everything here is magic, Meg had brought all of our meals wrapped up in this little plastic case. So we all sat down on a bench and waited patiently while she took the lunch bag out of the case and carefully unfolded it. Careful now, don't anybody push. And sure enough, out of the bag, each of us took a nicely cooked cheeseburger and a carton of milk. The 
the third special land we visited was frontier land, which is entered through a stockade gate. Here the boys naturally had to exchange their Disneyland hard hats for the Davy Crockett's coonskin caps, which had been brought all the way from Connecticut just for this occasion. The first stop by David and Danny was the Frontier Trading Post. Danny bought a pair of toy pistols too big for his holsters. And Dave bought a lariat to go with his fringe-worn jacket. We each mounted a donkey and took a ride up to a hillside where we could look out and see the Mississippi River steamboat, the Mark Twain, coming around the bend. This was a large stern paddle wheel boat which circled Tom Sawyer's island where we also spent some time before finally moving on to the fourth and final special land, Adventureland. Imagine all of this in one great park. Notice the elephant tusks marking the entranceway to Adventureland. Here the boys traded back their coonskin caps for the more protective Disneyland helmets. And now we were going to experience our most exciting travel adventure, riding in a jungle river cruise ship down some of the world's most famous and dangerous waterways. We were cautioned to keep our arms inside the boat, but some of us still got wet from the spray as we went underneath a waterfall on the Congo River in Africa. And we heard the loud trumpeting of an African bull elephant raising his long white tusks and flapping his great ears. We saw the heads of some large hippopotamuses wriggling their ears in warning. As we were watching one pair opening their mouths, our guide suddenly yelled, Look out! There's a big hippo right up ahead! And he pulled out his gun and fired a shot right at him. And then he fired again. Wow, what a close encounter that was. Dan had his pistol hub too, and we were all happy to get back safely. Before the week was over, our prize-winning family had spent parts of four days at Disneyland's Magic Kingdom, including one final ride down Main Street on the horse-drawn fire engine. We were almost totally exhausted by the end of our stay, but for our particular family at that particular time, we agreed with Walt Disney that this was the happiest place on earth. As we waved goodbye, we considered ourselves to be one of the most fortunate families in the world to have had this marvelous Disneyland dream actually come true. We made sure that young Danny was able to get in his last licks, and then we departed, forever grateful to Scotch brand cellophane tape for making all this possible for us. We hope you've enjoyed this Barstow travel adventure film. We'll be releasing more of Robbins Barstow's home movies on this YouTube channel during 2021. Click here to subscribe and receive the latest updates. Meanwhile, enjoy these other films by a master of home movie storytelling in the pre-digital era. <laughs>